Welcome back. This is lesson eight of machine learning Zoom Camp session eight. And in this lesson, we will talk about adding more layers to our neural network. So this is the neural network that we have. We take a pre-trained model based on ImageNet. We do not include top. We take only the convolutional layer from this neural network. We do not take the dense layers. And then we use this convolutional part to extract the vector representation of images. Right after that, we add another layer that produces the output directly from this vector representation. This is how dense layers look like. Here we have our vector representation, and this is our output. We also talked about that it's possible to add more layers. So after the vector representation, we do not immediately output the prediction, but we have another layer between these two that does some intermediate processing of the vector representation before it goes to the output. So usually when we have these inner layers, then neural network becomes more powerful. From the vector representation, it helps to learn some internal representation that is helpful for our particular task. So usually adding one or two more layers help. And this is something we can test for our project here. We can add one more layer and see if it helps predicting the type of clauses more accurate or not. So this is the model we have so far. So this is what we call version one, model D1. So let me take it and I'll copy it. So this is the version one that we have. This part, when we have vectors, so we have this vector representation and then we have the output. And then this is our, so this is our dense layer. So what we want to do now is we want to add one more layer between. So let me move that. This is still the output. This is still the vector representation. So we only add this part. And this will be dense, um, let's say 100. For that, let me move this to the next slide. For that, what we need to do is um, perhaps I just write it in code first and then I'll update this picture. So what we have so far is, let me just copy this thing. So we will have these outputs, which is the final dense vector. So what we need to do is have some inner layer. So also keras layers dense. And the size of this layer, uh, let's have it as a parameter, size, size inner. No. Let's say 100, and then it takes in the vector representation, and then the output, the final layer with predictions, the outputs takes in the output of the inner layer. So now it flows like that. So from the vector representation, it goes to the inner layer. Then we have the result, the output of this inner layer. It goes to the final prediction output. And then this is what we get when we do predict. And now I want to update this diagram. So this is dense layer. The way we transform vectors into this inner thing is by using uh, another dense layer, say 100. So the result for this transformation is then 32 by 100. And then we take this vector of size 100, and then we do the final transformation to get the output. Okay, but this is actually not enough. Uh, remember we talked about that there is also a thing called activation. I enlarged this a little bit. Remember we talked about that usually for neural networks at the end we have something like softmax. This softmax is called activation. It takes the row scores from the dense layer and it transforms them into a probability. So this is called activation. This transformation from row scores to something else is called activation. We actually don't use softmax here because we use legits directly, but it's kind of implied that softmax is there because if we take the raw output of our model and turn it into probabilities by using softmax, we'll have proper probabilities. And then for this layer, the one we just created, we also need an activation. In the neural networks, each layer should have some transformation in order to achieve better performance. And the activation we will use here is called relu. There are actually a bunch of different activation functions. We already know sigmoid. We also know softmax. And these are usually used for output. And then there are a bunch of activations that are used for intermediate steps. So one of them is called relu. And there are a bunch of others. 
I will not go into details, but let me show you the CS231 course. So there is the article is neural networks part one, setting up architecture, and they talk about activation functions, commonly used activation functions. So this is sigmoid, talked about sigmoid. Yeah, the one that we are interested in is this ReLU. So this is how it looks like. For negative inputs, it's zero. For positive inputs, it's just a straight line. Yeah, so this is the formula. And we are going to use this ReLU as well. For ELU, the formula is, uh, so if it's smaller than zero, then we just set it to zero. So if X is less or equal to zero, if it's actually larger than zero, then we set it to the value. So ELU stands for rectified linear unit, and it's one of the most popular activation functions. So if you're interested to learn more about that, you can go through these notes, but ELU is like the default activation function. So if you're not sure, just go with ELU. So let's add it. For doing this, we need a parameter called activation, and we just set it to ELU. This is similar to here. Like if we wanted to use softmax, then we'll just we'll write softmax here. But we don't use softmax because for our loss, we use from logits true. So we don't set softmax here. And we add activation for our inner layer. So each of the layers will have some activation. But remember, activation is nothing else but some post-processing of the output of the dense vector. Okay, so let's train our model. Yeah, so the size of the inner layer is also a parameter that we need to tune. So we need to try different values for that. I think we have a code for tuning learning rate. So I will reuse it as well. And the best learning rate for this project was this one. So I'll use it here. So the learning rate will be this one. We'll experiment with different sizes. So I'll try something small, then large, then super large. Here, yeah, we need to set size in there. So yeah, let's train for 10 epochs as well. And we need to replace the size here. So let's run it. I should say size. Did I make any other mistake? Um, yeah, let's run it. I do not add checkpoint in here. In principle, I should have added here. I do not just for simplification. While it's training, now it will probably take some time because I just started this notebook. Probably needs to again download the model, put this in memory, so it will take some time. Now it will start training. While it's training, I wanted to show you something. We can see how much our GPU is utilized. For that, I want to create a new terminal because I don't know how to actually connect to SageMaker through my terminal, but it's possible to use a terminal from Jupyter. So we have a terminal here. And there is a utility, command line tool from NVIDIA that lets you see the utilization of a GPU. It's called NVIDIA SMI. And it shows that our GPU is utilized now at 95%. So it's actually being used. What I often do during training is I just watch this command, which is a command line utility that just keeps executing the command and outputs the, the results so every two seconds. And this is a timestamp. And we see that our model is training. This is useful because let's, let's say if we're training a model and we see that our GPU utilization is small, 50%, 40%, then we are not effectively utilizing our GPU and we need to do something about this to optimize this process somehow. So in this particular case, it's okay. So we're quite good at utilizing the GPU. Now the model is training. It will take some time because we need to train three models with different sizes of the inner layer. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll just let it run and then come in a couple of minutes. So it finished training. So let's see what we have. Um, yeah, let's actually plot it. We have the code for plotting here. So let me use that. Here it's size. Actually, I was expecting to see something different. So in my experiments before that, this 100 was the best one. But here, to be honest, I don't see any difference, which makes me wonder if we should 
include any extra layer here or not. Perhaps I should have tried training it for longer time, but then again, like here it just starts oscillating and doesn't seem to make much sense here to do that. Here it seems like this uh, 10 and 100, they have similar performance, which is actually similar to having no, it's uh, when without a layer, I think, is it worse? Like it's 82. Yeah, I think it's uh, similar. So let me add ticks here to make sure that we see the score. So I'll add 78, 80, 82, and uh, 83, 82, and 5, and 83. So it doesn't seem like adding an extra layer helps in this particular case, which is strange. Maybe the neural network got unlucky because when I was experimenting with this last time, 100 was the, was better. Maybe we can just go without an extra layer to make our model less complex because each extra layer means adding more complexity to our model. So on one hand, it probably makes sense to try without this inner layer because we don't see clear performance difference here between the two. On the other hand, in the next lesson, we will talk about regularization and dropout. And I wanted to show you how to add dropout to this inner layer. So that's why let's keep it for now. And let's see what happens when we add dropout to that. When we add regularization, maybe it will actually improve. So for this video, it's um, all I wanted to cover. So I just wanted to show you how to add an extra layer and how to set activation for this layer. And we experimented with different values of the size of this layer. And in the next lesson, in the next video, we'll see how to add regularization to the layer we just added. So see you soon.